They love it. I love the discipline that they are gaining. Amen. And how they are loving, have developing a heart to be able to serve. Amen. Jesus Christ. Come on, help me praise God again for Genesis. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have your Bibles, go with me to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Just two verses in chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Amen. To our Facebook Live audience, we thank God for you. For tuning in. Hope well. Come on, help me praise God for our Facebook Live crew that's watching. Make sure in the comment section, let us know where you are tuning in from. Amen. And where you are receiving the word of God at. We thank God for you. So good to see Sister Nisha this morning. Amen. So glad to see her. Amen. Love it when Hope Wellians come and visit. Amen. Because Team Hope Well is everywhere. We are all over the place representing Georgia, Texas, the Caribbean. Is there somebody in the Caribbean? It's not anybody in the Caribbean. Amen. We'll be in the Caribbean. So Lord, send me out, though. Hallelujah. Amen. Philippians 4. <laughs> I hear a church plant. Praise God. Tampa, Florida, maybe. Okay, never know. Okay, here we go. Philippians 4. 6 through 7. I'm reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. When you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't, just say, wait on me, Pastor. Wait on me. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. And the reason is this. I love it. Don't worry about anything. Instead, Pray about everything. Simply tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Let me read that again. That's so simple. Goodness gracious, we miss it. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's Peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. the preacher is going to preach about the real reason why we don't pray. Turn to your neighbor next to you. Turn to the other neighbor and say, neighbor the preacher's going to preach about the real reason why we don't pray. God, we thank you. God, we praise you. God, we magnify you. We lift you up uh, because you are good. God, you are good. 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 God, yes, you are. Someone needs to hear that, God, in their hearing to build their faith that you are good despite what we may be feeling with despite what we may be facing despite what may be going on around us or in us god you are good god there's nothing that can change your character from being good you're good all the time god and so because you are good all the time god we will make our boast in you all the time father because you're good all the time we thank you for your word the power of your word the simplicity of your word so, God, all, all I ask that you use me as your servant. And, God, that when we walk away from here, Father, we can, we can apply what you've given us. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. Before you take your seat, hug your neighbor. You done sat by them for an hour or so. You ain't said nothing to them. Give them a compliment. Do something. Say something to them. Oh, my goodness. Now, if your neighbors who you rode to church with find another neighbor, that's not fair. You talk to them on the way to church. You talk to them on the way to church. Hallelujah. The real reason why we don't pray. Back in August, you all remember because I asked you guys to pray. Carrie had a procedure done on her eye. Um, we thought that glasses would fix the situation. We thought that there might have been some medicine or just something simple that she would not have to have surgery. So when the doctors first told us what needed to be done, I was okay with it. I said, I'm a man of faith. I believe God has already done. This is good. All is well. I was good up until August the 27th, the morning of the procedure. 
couldn't sleep the night before Dr. Lane couldn't sleep. Woke up early that morning. My parents had said, well, Chip, we're going to go ahead and come down for the search. I said, Mama, Daddy, y'all ain't got to come. I'm a big boy. I'm a man. I'm a husband. I'm a daddy. Y'all stay right there. I'll see y'all at Thanksgiving. All is well. I'm good. Days leading up to that, I texted his mama. I said, Mama, can y'all go ahead and just come on down here anyway? <laughs> so they came. And so get up. Morning of. Had to be there really early, so we got up, got to the hospital, and all of a sudden, driving there, on the inside, I'm crying because I'm nervous as all get out. Everything that could go wrong hits my mind. I say to myself, man, what, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if she goes and she has the surgery and they put her under and she doesn't come out? What if, what if, what if she goes in, she has a procedure and it does not fix the problem. It becomes worse and she has to go back and have the surgery again. I said, God, what if I lose my child in this procedure? And so the nurse came in, they told us, got us prepped, got us all set, got us all ready. They said, hey, but we're going to give her the anesthesia while you guys are in the room. That way, you know, if she's uncomfortable, she'll feel safe because you guys are around. So I was all well with that. I was all good with that. But then they took, then everything took a shift. Everything took a turn. And I said, wait a minute. Now I'm, I've been back here about 45 minutes, and now you have not given her the anesthesia. The nurse told me on the phone, Mr. Swims, we're going to give your baby the anesthesia while you're in the room with her. So just in case she freaks out, you will be there, and she'll feel safe, and she'll know everything was okay. And the nur another nurse comes up right and says, well. No, we're going to go ahead and we're going to give her the anesthesia once we get back to the operating room. I said, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. That's not what they told me over the phone. I, they told me that they were going to do it while we were in the room. So just in case she got upset, her daddy will be back here and she would feel safe. So she's on her way back at this time. Carrie has no idea what's going on. Her day has been made. She's still in her pajamas. She didn't have to fuss with nobody to brush her teeth. She didn't have to worry about getting her hair done. She's in her PJ. She's got a tablet. She's all set to go. And they're going down the aisle, Brother Lane. They're going down. Tears falling on my face. Fear capture my mind. The worst I'm thinking that could potentially happen, I'm thinking in my mind that it's going to happen. What if the doctors make the wrong move? What if she gets scared and I'm not back there? Nobody's not back there. What's going to happen to my baby? At that moment, when I should have been praying, I allowed fear, worry, and anxiety to choke the effectiveness of my prayer life because I put more weight in my worries than I did on God. Can I help us this morning? That I'm not the only one that has put more faith and more weight on my worries than I have God. I'm not the only one that has worried more than, 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 than I worried more and prayed less. I'm not the only one that my heart and my mind has been overwhelmed by the cares and what could happen and what, and what might happen. That I never allowed myself to be able to trust God and pray. So I'm still trying to keep it together. My mom is right there behind me. I'm trying to keep it together. I'm trying to keep it together. And my mom, she puts her hand on my shoulder. And she says, Chip, God's got it. She says, God's got it. At that moment, my mama told me something about God. That at that moment in my life when my heart and my mind was overwhelmed with fear, overwhelmed with worry, overwhelmed with concern, that it was not my job to be the head of the household now. Okay. That it wasn't my job to stand as Pastor Swims. Okay. That it wasn't my job to stand as Christopher E. Swims. 
But my job and my position now was to stand as a child of God who's in need of his daddy to intervene on his behalf. Oh, I'm trying to help us out this morning that we have to stop putting more weight in our concerns and our anxieties and our worries and change the position and stop being control freaks and say, God, I'm giving this to you. God, I'm inviting you in. God, I'm giving you access to do what only you can do because get this I know I know I know worry 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 can seem such can seem like a safe place to be worry and anxiety can seem like oh it's okay I can do this I can handle this but what worry does not tell you is that worry cho chokes God out of the equation and, and invites more worry in instead of us relying and depending upon God because when we are worried we are putting more weight on ourselves than we are God wake up church come on here when we're anxious when we're worried when we're concerned, yes. we are putting more weight on what we can do to fix the situation well. than we do on how God can intervene and fix it. Okay, let me go ahead and say this curse word real quick. The real reason why we don't pray <laughs> is because we're control freaks. All right. Okay, welcome to Control Freaks Anonymous. You don't have to identify yourself. Just, look, just keep looking straight at me. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Just look straight at me and just blink two times. I'm not going to say nothing. I won't even look back at you. But all of us all right. have some sense within us that we have to have our hands on it. And if we don't have our hands on it, we don't know what to do. Oh, God, I wish I'd be real in here today. If I don't control every area, every aspect of my child's life, instead of them submitting them, instead of me submitting them into the hands of God, and I'm pacing the floor, and I'm walking all night, and I'm losing weight, not eating, when I'm failing to realize, hey, they going to do what they want to do when they want to do it, how they want to do it, regardless of the lack of sleep I have, regardless of the pace of the floor that I made, they're going to do what they want to do. If I don't have my hands on my health, if I don't have my hands on my finances, if I don't have my hands on my future, if I don't help God out in getting me a spouse. Okay. Well, God, you told me faith without works is dead, Lord. Go ahead, preacher. So I'm not going to go to ChristianMingles.com. I'm going to SanctifyChristianMingles.com. <laughs> and I'm going to find me a holy and righteous man or woman of God. The real reason why we don't pray is because our worries and our anxieties leave no room for God to come in. The real reason why we don't pray is because worry and anxiety is overwhelming us and overtaking us. And it leaves no room for God to be able to come in. Have you ever gone to Walmart, you had a list and you had a budget in mind of how much you were going to spend? That you said, I'm going in that store and I'm only spending $100 in the name of Jesus. I buy sales, I buy clearances, I buy all the unnecessary stuff that's going to come my way as I'm going down aisle two. I'm not putting, the devil is a lie, I'm not putting nothing else in my basket that's not on my list. But as soon as we get into Walmart, yes. Yes. walking through, two for five, three for ten. Buy one, get one. Buy two, get the third one free. 
and we've literally lost our minds. And we get to the counter. We get to the checkout line. Where I done got stuff on my list. Lord, you done made a way for me to get a little extra stuff. Praise God. And we get up there, and they start ringing stuff up, and we get that final amount. We said, the devil is a lie. No, it don't cost that much. No, it's not. I only got, oh. And the next thing you know, you look in your basket and everything that you got was stuff that you didn't need. And you've walked out of Walmart unaccomplished because you didn't even get what was on your list. We've allowed the extra stuff, the sales, to crowd out room for the necessary stuff that was on our list to get. It's the same way with worry. It's the same way with prayer. That we allow worry and anxiety to overwhelm us. That it leaves little room for God to come in to do what only he can do. Right. Prayer, I told you. Simple definition of prayer is voluntarily. It voluntarily gives God permission to invade our personal affairs. It's when we ask God and we crushed of God to get involved in our business. Prayer is when we seek God out in realizing this is beyond my pay grade. This is beyond what I have the ability to be able to do. This is beyond what I have the capacity to be able to do. And we invite God in to do what only God can do. Here it is, Paul is talking to the Philippians. They got a lot going on. They got a lot going on that goes beyond chapter 4. It goes back to chapter 1. Paul writes this letter, writes this letter as he is in prison. And in chapter 1 and chapter 2, he's having to deal with discord in the church because people are selfish and only thinking about themselves. And Paul is having to encourage them to keep their focus and to keep their attention on Christ. Chapter 3, false prophets, false teachers. I'm making a headway. They're coming out and they're preaching that, hey, all this stuff that you're preaching about when it comes to salvation, that all you need to do is be obedient to the law and you can be saved just by being obedient to the law. So they're coming against the gospel of Jesus Christ and they're coming against Paul's teaching. Okay. Worry. Selfish people in the church. False teaching taking place. Chapter 4, chapter 4, chapter 4, chapter 4. In uh, 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 chapter 4, Paul is having to call out two ladies because they can't get along. They can't get along. They're arguing and they're bickering in the house of God. And Paul has to take another step and he has to call them out by name in order to bring some order and structure in the house of God. So much going on. All right. So much to worry about. So much to be anxious about. So much to be concerned about. But Paul writes this letter and he tells them in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, he ends it by saying, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say again, rejoice. Let someone see that you are considerate in all that you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. I told you all, Paul is in prison. He's writing this letter. He's trying to guide the Philippian church. He's trying to guide the Philippian people in the right direction to lead them back to Christ. And he's having to encourage them. But I love what he says in verse 4. He reminds them. He reminds them. He says, listen, listen. Always be full of joy in the Lord. Though they have discouragement, though stuff is looking, stuff is looking crazy around them. Notice what he says is, have joy in who? In the Lord. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh preach, Pastor Swims. They don't want you to, but I'm going to preach anyhow. He says, have joy right. in the Lord. Why? Thus Paul encourages the church and encourages us to have joy in the Lord. He encourages us to have joy in the Lord because joy in the Lord is the only solid thing that we got. Everything around us is fickle. Everything around us is changing. So I need to have my joy in something that does not change. I must have my, I must have my joy grounded in something that is not going to 
will wash away. They will not go away. Paul says, well, I need you to have your joy in the Lord because get this, thanks of God. When our joy is in the Lord, no one has to come and tell you to lift your hands in church. No one has to tell you to stand up and praise and worship God. No one has to do any of that because my joy is in the Lord. Before I came to church, I already had church. Before I came to church, I woke up but when my mind stayed on Jesus and made up in my mind, this is the day that the Lord has made and I'm making it as a decision to rejoice and be glad in it. Paul tells them, Paul tells them, make sure your joy is in the Lord. Can I tell you something? He's not, he's, just, he's not just talking to the Philippians. He's talking to us as well. To make sure that your joy is in the Lord. Oh, man, life is crazy. Life is crazy. Stuff is crazy. I mean, you will have some unexpected stuff just hit you out of nowhere. You can be all good and well, you know, woke up with your mind stayed on Jesus and just bam. Something will just happen. But when my joy is in the Lord, get this, you all, when my joy is in the Lord, it does not exempt me from trouble. It prepares me for trouble. When my joy is in the Lord, it does not exempt me from stressful circumstances, but it prepares me not to be stressful about the circumstance. When my joy is in the Lord, our hell could be breaking loose at home, on my job, in my life, but I find my strength on the rock. I find my strength in the Lord. Then knowing that he will never leave me, nor will he forsake me, my joy must be found in the Lord. I wish somebody would help me preach. You can go through sickness and have the joy of the Lord. You can go through a divorce and have the joy of the Lord. You can go through financial crisis and have the joy of the Lord. Your kids can lose their mind and you can still have the joy of the Lord. Why? My joy is not in my circumstances. My joy is in the God of my circumstances in whom I trust. Thank you, Lord. So Paul tells him, Paul tells him, Paul tells him, tells him, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. Mainly remind them, don't forget that you are a believer of Jesus Christ. While you're walking around here cutting up in church, while you're walking around here being selfish, while you're walking around here believing every TV evangelist that comes on, remember, you are a child of God. You are an ambassador for Christ. Then he goes on to say in verse 6, because he's having to do something. He's having to say something to be able to encourage the hearts of the Philippians. Look at what he says. He says, don't worry about anything. <laughs> God, that sounds so free. That sounds so free and just so, he make it sound so easy. Hey, you, don't worry about anything. Instead of worrying, just pray about everything. He says, tell God what you need and thank him for all that he's done. Paul gives us the remedy for winning against worry and anxiety. Paul says, if you want to win against worry, and anxiety, yeah. Yeah. he says, all you need to do is pray. Y'all right. were looking for me to say real something real deep, philosophical, right? <laughs> PhD stuff, I know, I know. Paul said, if we want to win the war against worry and anxiety, right. all we need to do is don't worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. In fact, here it is, Paul is not giving this to them as an option. All right. Paul is giving them this as a command. Stop worrying, Philippians. Stop worrying, believers of Jesus Christ. And bring your cares to God. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. Stop worrying, people of God. Stop being anxious, people of God. Stop being overwhelmed, people of God, and bring your cares to God. Here it is, saints of God. Here it is. Here it is. God cares about 
every situation. God cares about every area of your life. God cares about every area of your life. God is concerned about those things that concern you. God is concerned about those things that worry you. God is concerned about those things that overwhelm you. God is concerned about those things that keep you up at night. God is concerned about those things that are dear to your heart. God is concerned about every area of your life. But we exclude God from God getting involved in every area of our life when we put more weight in our worry and our anxiety than we do in him okay. and bringing our worries and our anxieties yes. to him. Yes. What are you worried about? What are you anxious about? Because sometimes worry is just short-lived, but it's the pain of anxiety. That's like a constant toothache that no matter how much oral gel and ibuprofen you take, it ain't going nowhere. It wakes you up out of your sleep. It keeps you from sleeping. It keeps you from focusing. It keeps you from moving, moving forward because you're always having a nagging feeling about what could happen, what might happen, when it might happen. What is it that you haven't laid at the feet of Jesus? that you've been carrying all week. That when you get to church, you're so distracted. That you're here in body, but your mind is somewhere else. We missed what the message was about. We missed video announcements. We didn't even see the person, person running around the church. Our minds are somewhere else because we're so distracted. What is it that's overwhelming you? That you're missing living in the moment. That you're constantly on edge. You're irritated. Agitated. Frustrated. Every eight that there is, you got it. What is it? That's overwhelming your heart. What is it? that's taking over your mind, that's causing you to sin, that I put more weight in my fears than I do in God. What is it that has you up at night that you can't sleep? What is it that even when you try to pray, you can't even get focused enough to pray? What is it that's constantly overwhelming you? From casting your cares to God. When we, when worry consumes our heart, it will lead us to experience, get this, it's going to be on the screens in a moment. It will cause us to experience hope or will cause us to experience doubt. Hope. It's an expectation that I know that God is going to come through for me. All right. Hey. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Lord. But what do you do when you've been holding on for hope for half the year? An expectation for half the year. Or somebody just said, or oh, longer than that. And God hasn't showed up yet. Hope will go out the window and then doubt will invite itself in and shack up with us rent free. Run the light bills up, eat all the food. And cause us to believe that if God has not done it by now, Brother Jeffro, he ain't going to do it. When worry overwhelms us, either we're going to have hope I hope we're going to have doubt. But I came to preach to somebody today that may be hopeless now. That you will exchange your doubt for hope in the expectation that God is going to do what he promised he would do. Oh, God, let me find my church real quick. 
I'm making the intentional and deliberate decision today that I am exchanging my I am exchanging my doubt for hope and I am refueling my expectation in God. I don't care that we're two months, that we're almost out of 2018. I don't care how things may have gone the past 11 months of this year. I still have hope and expectation that God can turn things around. So Paul simply says, invite God in, get God involved in what's going on, let God be God, let God be big, let him do what only he can do. But notice what else he says, he says, don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything. When I get to heaven, I'm going to tell Paul, I said, Paul, you made that sound so simple and easy to do that. He said, tell God what you need, and get this, thank him for all he's done. Now, wait a minute, Pastor. My heart is overwhelmed with worry and anxiety. I, I, I'm tired. You done told me to pray. Now you want me to thank him too, Pastor. You're asking too much for me on this Sunday morning. Now you, well, Paul said to pray, told him to give everything over to God, and now you're saying that you want me to give it to God. You want me to pray, and now you want me to thank God. But wait a minute, Pastor. God didn't even did nothing yet, and you want me to thank him. Yes, we want, yes, we are called to thank him. And get this, you all. This is thanking God by faith. Yeah, yeah. This is intentionally and deliberately thanking God by faith. I know I don't see it yet. I know that I don't feel it yet. I know that I don't hear it yet. But I believe that God is going to do it. Where is my church? Wake up, y'all. Here it is. He says, I may not see it yet. I may not hear it yet. I may not feel it. But I still believe. I don't know. Somebody be, Somebody can be crazy and say that they may have experienced some sickness in their body. And they can say, I'm already healed. Even though I may not feel like it. Even though I may not look like it. I'm already healed because of what God has already said in his word. So I'm thanking him in advance. Okay, okay. Man, y'all making me work really hard today. Really hard today. I'm glad I have to preach a Sunday afternoon. I'd be exhausted. You guys are really working me hard. Here it is, here it is, here it is. Everly just turned four years old a few weeks ago. Okay, okay, okay. So, Everly has gone through, I don't, Erica, how many surgeries has she gone through? Two. She's gone through two surgeries, seizures. I mean, she's been through more in her four years of living than some of us have in their lifetime. Doctors have said she wouldn't be able to do this, that she wouldn't be able to do that, that she wouldn't be able to do this, and she wouldn't be able to do that. Don't count on her doing this. Don't count on her doing that. And so what we did was we rallied around, and we were just crazy people of faith, and we just started praying. And in the midst of our praying, we just started thanking God that, God, we thank you in advance that everything's going to go to school. God, we thank you in advance that everything's going to talk. God, we thank you in advance that everything's going to walk. Now, it took some time. It took some time because we didn't always see, Miss Williams, what we wanted to see. But don't you know that God is God on his own time and he does what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, how he wants to do it. Don't you know that Everly has started school and she's active in school? Don't you know that Everly has been taking a few steps and she's been walking? Don't you know that Everly has been scooting on the floor. Don't you know that Evelyn has been using the activities of our limbs? Oh, Pastor, that's real small. That's real small. No, that's not. That's real big because it has defined what doctors who have gone to school and got degrees said that would not happen, but what they failed to realize, though you may be a doctor, we serve the God of all the doctors who is the CEO of doctors, and he said that she will be able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ever ask think a wish. Yeah, oh, it was in our midst of our praying that we began to thank God and we called things out by faith. Though it didn't look like it, though it didn't feel like it, though it took time, God has been God and he's still working miracles today. Somebody ought to help me praise our God. I said, somebody ought to help me praise my God. Okay, okay. You ought to stop right now and begin to thank God for all he has done for you. From January to February to March to April to May to June to July, August, September. Things you see and I'm saying thank him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, God. 
I said, thank him. 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 I know you don't see some stuff, but thank him. I know you don't been through some stuff, but thank him. Because the more I think, the less I whine. The more I think, the less I complain. Because in the midst of everything that's going on, I can look back and see how good God has been to me. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, fill the sanctuary with praise. Come on, fill the sanctuary with gratitude. Come on, fill the atmosphere with praise for all that the Lord has done. Oh, because the more you think, the more you think. The more you start thinking, the more you start to thank him for all that he's done. Uh, uh, uh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Here it is. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Come on, if there's nobody else on your roll thanking him, you be the one. You be that one to thank him. You be the one to thank him by faith. Though it don't look like it don't feel like, but God, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, let your vocal voice be the instruments this morning. Come on, let your hands be instruments this morning. Let your voice be an organ this morning. Let your voice be an orchestra this morning of gratitude for what the Lord has done. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Some writer said, You've been so good. You've been so good. To me. And I just want to, I just want to thank you, Lord, for being so good. I just want, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. Come on, praise him. Help me sing it. Thank you, Lord. Come on, worship team. Come on, we didn't have a divine interruption right now. Come on, thank you. Come on, open your mouths and sing. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Those in Facebook land, come on and sing with us. Thank you.
more, one more time. Come on, one more, one more. Thank you, Lord. Give it to me, give it to me. You made a way, you made a way. Come on, you know the word. Sing it to yourself. to be said but God is here right now and I don't want to miss this moment there are some of you in here right now you need to come to this altar right now so that the burdens that you have been carrying can be released today there are some of you that's in this room right now you carry the weight not just for yourself but you carry the weight for everybody in your family everybody comes to you to pray everybody expects for you to be the strong one and they fail to realize that sometimes the strong one gets weak too. If that's you, I want you to bum rush this altar right now. I want you to come to this altar right now. I want you to come with your hands lifted, with your hands lifted to God. I want you to come, I want you to come to this altar right now. I want you to come. And as you're here at this altar, I need you to open your mouth. I want you to open your mouth, and I want you to begin to let everything go. Let everything go. If it's a person, if it's a thing, whatever it is, let everything go. You need to leave this altar free. You need to leave 2018 free. Let it go today. Let it go. 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 Every person, everything your job, whatever, let it go in the name of Jesus today so that you can be free in your mind. You need to be free in your mind. You need your peace back in the name of Jesus. Be free. In the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your voices, lift your voices. Give it to him, give it, give it to him. And there's some that still need to be here. We got time. Come to this altar. Come, 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 come. There's nothing magical about it, but you need to come. You need to come. You need to come and sacrifice your worry and, and sacrifice your anxieties and, and sacrifice your cares. That's overwhelming your mind, overwhelming your heart. He's strong. Hallelujah. Release it today, release it today, release it today, release it today. Every care, cast your cares on him, for he cares for you. He cares, he cares, he cares, he cares. He cares for you. I pray for peace in your mind, peace in your heart. I pray for divine insulation against every external circumstance. That though God may not change your circumstance, he will give you peace. 
He will give you peace. He will give you peace. Exchange your doubt for peace. Exchange your worry for peace. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus.